it's academic and it's even the place where they both meet. We have the audience and participants for each other. Thank you. What time is it now, uh, Kenya? It started out about different people and about different things. A whole sea of phenomena. Theater for everybody. Yes, everybody. Let's get what can be done. That's the thing. It's a to the Martin e. Siegel Theater Center, Siegel Center here at the Graduate Center CUNY. My name is Frank Henschko, and I am the um, director um, of programs. And it's a very uh, important day in our uh, year here. It is the opening of the Penn World Voices Festival. We really think this is at the heart and center of what we do. It is one of the most significant program uh, when it comes to playwriting. And I think the, uh, the collection of uh, international playwrights uh, most probably is unmatched uh, when that comes to North or South America in a festival. We are thrilled to be part of the Penvold Voices Festival. Right now, over 80 writers from all over the world are here as uh, guests of Penn, which is the writer's uh, organization, and uh, f they have the fr um, Freedom for Write program. They get writers out of prison, and they promote literature, get our fantastic awards, and really uh, uh, it is uh, the most significant uh, literary organization here in the US, and the festival is the most uh, significant one, and we are thrilled as the Siegel Center to be part of this festival with our um, uh, plays, which we put together and create together with them. This morning, we had already Patricia Cornelius from Australia here. Patricia, is she? Yeah, okay. he, he, over here, yes. And there was a terrific reading directed by Katie Pearl. And now we come to a contribution from Ukraine. It's uh, Natalia Vorozbit. And she already was here once at the Siegel Center with the Royal Court at Elise Doxon for the um, Brooklyn, uh, uh, Brooklyn uh, Beach Project, uh, Brighton Beach Project, and uh, we are thrilled to have her back here. The translation of the play, Take Out the Rubbish, Sasha, is by uh, Sasha Dugal and directed by um, Sarah Yu. Sarah, where is she? Uh, here she is. You know, I've, I have my reading glasses on. So um, really, thank you all um, um, for coming. We bridge academia and professional theater, international and American theater, though this festival is really right at our heart. Penn created this to uh, open up the tunnel vision. They feel not enough international work is being read or seen or heard. Over 95% of all books published in the US are uh, in the English language, from, come from the English language. On the rest, 5%, half of it is from Germany or France because books are subsidized. So we hear, hear very, very little. And as you know, this theater scene in New York, most probably better than I do, you know how little we actually see also on the stages. So this is a serious program to help, uh, to foster, and to also listen to masters of their craft from all around the world. With us tonight also this evening is Christian Parker uh, from the head of the Columbia um, University Theater Program who will then uh, uh, speak with the uh, director and the playwright with Natasha, Sarah, and, uh, and uh, Sasha himself. And uh, again, thank you for coming. The last thing is, please, if you have a cell phone, take it out for one moment. I'll do the same and see if it's <laughs> off. It should be on silent and off. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, here we go. chop the onion and the bacon fat, but finally mine. By then the oil will be hot enough, spitting. Chop the onion and the fat in and fry them until transparent. Then add a little bit of flour and brown it. A pinch of salt. 
You want it mixed in well. And that's it. Ready for whatever you're making. Mm, remember it from when I was a kid. Can we have those tomorrow? No. For tomorrow, we'll have the plain ones. No fancy stuff. Oh. Meat and cabbage. How many will there be? Mm, about 60, I'd say. Well, what if more people come? Well, I've done a good few more. There's plenty. A little bit more herring. Won't make you sick. Mm. I'm dying of hunger. Go on, then. Eight different sorts of sweets are lying on the table. A deep bowl of minced meat, batteries, chopped cabbage, a candlestick, and a loaf of black bread. A basket of biscuits, sellotape, a vase, an old onion quarter, scissors, a plate of roughly sliced herring, a bill for household charges. Can't even look at food. The saddest thing is that he won't see Kolya, and he really wanted to see Kolya. If he'd wanted that, he wouldn't have left us. Oh, Mom. If he'd wanted to see his grandson, he wouldn't have left us. I remember his reaction when he found out that it was a boy. That's it. He said, no more women ruling the roost. It'll be equal now. Well, it won't. It won't be equal now. Kolya won't have a granddad, not a dad, nor a granddad. He's got a dad. Ugh, hardly much of one. Why don't you talk to him? Maybe he'll come back. He's the only one who listens to uh, What, Oleg? No. Sasha. Talk to him. She's right, you know. We really need you. Was there something missing for you? No. Nothing like that. Things were fine. You wouldn't have done it if things had been fine. Done what? Oh, how can you ask? I heard him getting up. 5.30. Things all in. I wasn't planning on getting up. I put his clothes out the night before. I heard him go into the bathroom, and from there, there's an almighty crash. I go in, and he's just, just lying there on the ground. His head like this, and, and he's whispering something. No, I don't remember that. He's whispering something. He was still whispering. And I, I can't bother her. Who am I going to ring? Even now it makes me feel... Well, the lot from the morgue turned up, and they wrapped him in a carpet to carry him out. I never gave that carpet back. Put that fish away. It smells. I can't stand it. How could you do it to me? Shh, you'll spoil the dough. We weren't even having a row before it happened. It was all quiet. We went to bed. You two had a row every day. Oh, so I'm to blame, am I? You were always both to blame. True. You were always on his side. She understood me. Well, no one understood me, not you, not her. Don't involve me in this, all right? Who's involving you? You, you relax. You're supposed to be keeping calm. The cabbage is ready. What now? Oh, put the sweets in those favor bags, 60 bags. <clears throat> put one of each in. There's a, eight different sorts. Toffees, jelly fruit, boiled sweets. You always used to hide them from him, the sweets? He used to eat them all. He never used to leave any behave like he was the only one in the house. Didn't matter how many he put out. He'd work his way through them, drove me crazy. Well, he was welcome to them. There you go. You come back, <laughs> you can eat till you choke. What's that supposed to mean? He loved those plain toffees. Didn't I earn enough to have myself a few toffees? That's all you did earn enough for. You weren't wrong there. Made in toffees, you were. Well, now you'll get my pension. Two thousand. You should have dropped dead long ago. <laughs> You'd be a rich woman by now. That's not fair. You were carrying him up the drink. Sweets for all he was allowed. Stop howling and keep calm. The soup went off, and instead of chucking it out, you boiled it and gave it to him for lunch. You've got some nerve sitting here and saying that. Is that true? It's not true. <laughs> We'd get the fresh meat he'd get the day before yesterday's. Well, what was I supposed to throw it out? Oh, Katya, you treated me like a dog. Was there any, uh, was there ever any love? Oh, marvelous. He'll be 
be back before you can say the word. Sasha, come back. Come back where? To my dog kennel? I was joking about the soup. She hasn't eaten anything for nine days now. Katya, you must eat. I can't. I feel so sick. Katya, sweetheart. always born days. Mom, yeah. Hobby, that's what it was. Not a real job. Never earned anything in that army. Went off on trips to see his mates. Had his fun. He was a soldier, an officer, a colonel. An officer. An officer. I was the bloody officer. My whole life was a battle. I fought for this place, for the Toyota, my two kiosks. So you could eat nice food and wear smart clothes, and what did I get? Fights with the tax people, the fire officers, competitors. Who's the officer around here? Me. I was an officer in the Ukrainian army. But what army? Why? There hasn't been a war since anyone can remember. Just a bunch of big men all pretending to do something. Lazy so-and-sos. No money, no glory. Spoon fed by your wives like little babies. No wonder they all laughed at you. You deserved it. Who? Oh, everyone. The ones in charge. The Ukraine. It's at home they laugh at me. No one laughs at me like you do. Well, go to your work then. You go and live at your work and they can. Mom. What? What? I won't say another word. That's it. Let, let's move the table. What for? Well, well, look where it is. Girls, you shouldn't. Don't go straining yourself. Just, just drag it. Wow. OK, that's enough. Don't you see that? Well, what can I do? Well, that's obvious. You can't do anything. You never could, never. Even your teeth I paid for. No, that's not fair. Not fair on who? What good was there in it? First 10 years you drank, the next 10 years you were miserable, you never had a life, and there's nothing to look back on. Uh, our holiday in, in Crimea. Oh, you never went abroad because you weren't allowed. I was the USSR freestyle wrestling champion. You might be proud of that. Proud of what? A couple of bent ears was all you got. Oh my God, you never could say a nice word about me. Sasha, I'll say a nice word about you. Is that allowed? No. You're always, always your favorite anyway. We haven't got enough for 60 favor bags. Well, don't put eight in each, then put in six. Maybe we could buy some more? I'm cleaned out as it is. 22,000. And then there's the gravestone. Oh, don't bother with a stone. Put a cross there. Oh, right, right away. Did we forget to ask you? It would only be a couple of kilos of sweets. Six in each, that's a dot. Where did you put my medals? Where do you think I put them? Who the hell wants medals for Soviet champions? The champions are gone, and all we're left with is the medals. Even the countries disappeared. But the medals are still here. A fine inheritance I've been left by officer husbands. Where can I sell scrap metal? Where can they sell scrap metal? How much is it going for? Nothing? I might have known. They're in the wardrobe. Don't worry. You barely had a life, Sasha. Come back and finish it off. Get your pension. And if you won't have to go to that bloody work, I won't nag you. Have as many sweets as you can. We'll take holidays in the country, in Egypt, in the winter. The only reason I was worried about you retiring was that you'd, you'd get bored and start drinking. At work, you had the illusion that you were serving someone, that there was some point to you. You kept yourself off the drink. But if you want, you can have a drink. Just a little bit, cheer you up, a bit of wine, or whatever you want to drink. Even that uh, homemade stuff Nina makes. What use am I to you? Well, what am I without you? No one to irritate you. <laughs> you never irritated me. <laughs> You'd say anything when you need something. What did I just say? I do understand that I was the wrong man for you. <laughs> oh, no. You were the right man. I just, I didn't see it. 
There's no way back from this, don't you see? Well, I don't believe it. It just suits you to say that. <laughs> it's not a work trip, Katya. I see it all now. What? What do you see? Tanya. She said you would leave me. And I was helping. The dough is rising, and it swells over the top of the pan. It's worse than worked up a treat. Sasha used to love my pies. When was the last time you baked pies? Oh, when did I have time? Either we were doing the place up or paying off a loan, and the, the whole lot fell to me, the wife of an officer. Hey, Sasha? get used to him not being here. I keep thinking he's still here with us and talk to him, nag at him. <laughs> Me too. How am I going to get through tomorrow? Nine days it'll have been, then 40 days, and, and then a year, and each time they'll be here watching, talking about us, judging us, how much food I put on the table, how many people came, what we wore. Have you got something to wear? Oh, that black dress that I wore at the birthday party. It's a bit short. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would happen if we didn't do it? Didn't do what? Didn't do anything tomorrow mm -hmm. for the ninth day. What would happen? What do you mean? No peace for the soul. Your soul? Sasha's. Oh. What do you think? Should we book the taxi today? No, tomorrow is fine. Half an hour before, and we'll pick up Grandma on the way. Well, uh, Tolik is bringing Grandma to the cemetery. Oh, right. Damn bin is full. Take them out the shower, Sasha. Sasha. Epitaphs to suit any taste. You took so much of us with you. So much of us, so much of you is left with us. How hard to find the words to say. How pain leaves us bereft and sore. We can't believe you've gone away. You'll be with us forevermore. You labored on with many a care, and now you sleep for eternity. So sleep without those heavy cares. Always with you, your family. Standing, weeping over your grave, my bitter pea tears water the turf. I can't believe my beloved lays below in the cold, dark earth. The sun is shining, but not for me. I lie in the earth, and I cannot see. Forgive us that we carry flowers under starry skies to your grave. Forgive, Forgive us, us that, that we breathe, breathe the air that, that you can, can never breathe, breathe again. again. You loved angels and a child's laughter, never plucked the lilac sprays. You might have wished to overthrow the master, but you were a child with innocent ways. And so forgive him, Lord. The cemetery is to the north of the city, a new cemetery. There are many sorts of cemeteries. Old, mysterious ones, happy ones, and sad ones. But this is a brand new, honest cemetery. <clears throat> one in which you realize that death is not the lot of a chosen few, but the careful reaper of all, who will, without a doubt, come for you as well.
wife, Sasha. <coughs> Eat up. Have you put the sweets out? Oh, of course I did. They had a shock when they saw the memorial. I bet they did. And then I told them how much I paid. They had a shock. Didn't expect that. I'm really happy. God, you can't imagine. It's like a load's been lifted. First time in a year, I feel like a load's been lifted. A year ago, we were right on the edge of the cemetery. It's just crazy how many people have died in a year. There's a girl over there, really young, and a child, Christ, born in 2010. That's terrible. Yeah. They're dying very young. I'm always wondering why Sasha left us oh, so early. Heart disease. He was murdered. Christ, Mom. His spirit was killed. Well, what, by us? Us? At work. The command, putting pressure on him all the time. Always making more demands on him. And that boss of his was a shit. As soon as something went wrong, he was threatening him. And they were also scared of being let go. It's not like he wouldn't have found himself work. He'd have been in demand everywhere. It doesn't matter. God sees everything. It'll be payback time soon. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, doesn't matter. Just put in another one. Whatever. You spitting it out? Well, don't give it to him, please. No, I did tell you. I told you before I left. But it'll be okay. A spoomazin. Yeah, give him a spoomazin. How's my little sweetie pie? He's spitting out his dummy. Call it. Oh, it's Umazen, is what he means. That's what I told him. He doesn't know what a candy baby is. No, not this again. If his granddad was alive, then everyone, everything would be different, and, and Oleg wouldn't have gone off. Uh, how, how are those things connected? When I was uh, learning to drive, I met a widow, and she said that after her husband died, her daughter's husband immediately walked out on her. Like male solidarity or something. I should have called Kolya Sasha. Now I'm sorry I didn't. Well, call the next one Sasha. Oh, what if it's a girl? Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. I'll call her Sasha. Sasha. My own sweet husband. A year has passed since that terrible day. When you left without saying goodbye, well, if that's what you decided to do, it, it must be you knew something, like, like God must have called you up into his heavenly army. Lie in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. That's right. That's who's great. All this year we've been thinking of you and grieving every moment. Baby Polly is the only reason I haven't died of grief. Your grandson, funny little thing. He looks like you. <coughs> Next year we'll all come. We left him with his nanny today because it is damp here. Look what a memorial you've got. I hope you're happy with it. I tried my best. And this bit here is, is for me. God will let me know when we're due to meet again. But for the time being, I'm working. I've got another stall. I can hardly cope, and Oleg isn't helping. But, but let's not talk about the sad things. It's very hard without you. Not a day has passed when Oksana and I haven't thought about you. But we have to <coughs> carry on. You rest in peace. But we're still here for the time being. Oh, I didn't put any caviar on, on his sandwich. I'm going to change his name. Which one? I'll register him as Alexandrovich in honor of Sasha. Will you leave Oleg's surname? No, I don't want it. 
I'll give him mine. Give him Sasha. No, that would be a bit odd. He's not the father. I suppose. That grave over there hasn't been looked after at all. We could at least throw the old flowers away. Although, what's that odd, Lizzie? The boy's got to be proud of his name. His dad's name isn't going to add much. What good can you tell him about his dad? But Sasha, you can tell him a lot about his granddad. You can show him his medals and tell him how he de defended you when Uncle Yura shouted at you. I don't remember. Uncle Yura was shouting at you because you were 13 and smoking. He was shouting at you because you'd started too early. And Sasha told him to mind his own business and sort out his own kids. We'll sort out our own. And Uncle Yura said, but she's not yours. And Sasha, he took you by the hand like this, and he said, she's mine all right. And Uncle Yura was apologetic, right up to when we moved. <coughs> Let's have some more wine. You going to say a speech? in my head. Sasha. No. Months before you died, I didn't stand up for you and wanted that glass of champagne at the new year and mom wouldn't give it to you. I was scared to go back on the drink too. Lizzie, when you went on the drink, it was funny at first. <laughs> I'll never forget when you took me to the circus. But by the fourth day of drinking, you just turned into an animal. Oh, I can see that glass of champagne even now. I don't suppose I'll ever drink champagne again. And I remember how cross I was with you when you chased off all my admirers. <laughs> you were right, though. They all turned out to be shits. <laughs> That Oleg, the one you called a bastard, disappeared off to Russia to work and never came back. And oh, I've got to confess something. Just after you married Mom, I spat in your soup. Mm. I was a stupid teenager, but all the same, I'm sorry for it now. Poor, poor Sasha. I don't know how you put up with us or why, why people live with each other and put up with each other, especially mom, all her jealousy and hysterics, and she was always putting you down. Sometimes I wanted to just grab a chair and swing it at her head. Forgive her and forgive me. After you died, I began to think that you were the only man in my life, neither a lover nor a father, just a man. got nothing to say to him, why don't you tell us one of your memories? Oh, <laughs> oh I can only think of stupid stuff, like um, when a beetle climbed in your ear and Sasha washed it out with homemade vodka. <laughs> yeah. Remember when a pack of dogs attacked some woman in the town center and Sasha saved her? And then the woman gave him a knife. <laughs> Balia she was from Balzac Street. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was it. He was a man. You remember how he used to turn heads? An officer. Don't make them like that anymore. And his students adored him. And his subordinates. He could be strict, but they respected him. Because he had a sense of humor. He loved playing jokes on people. He never refused me anything. I'd say, Sasha, I need to go somewhere. And get up without saying a word and go. Like when grandma was ill or you were. No question, any time of the day or night. I really miss him. In Crimea, he got into a fight with some men from Moscow. You know how they behave down there. Mm. So he fought. I mean, he ripped them to shreds. That was it, they vanished. He brought them down. One against three, I thought he'd killed them. 
He was a champion sportsman, and he died with dignity, not in his bed, not soiling himself. I had this dream. I didn't want to tell you about it. What? Then he hadn't actually died. His death had been fake, like one of those secret military operations. Instead <coughs> of him, there was another man's body that looked like him. And then a year later, he comes back and says, I'm so sorry, girls. I had my orders. I had to do it. I couldn't get out of it. So I started yelling at him, how could you? We were in hell. But at the same time, I was crying with happiness. And I woke up in tears, and it was all a dream. <laughs> Burst into tears again, so. So unfair. Imagine if it had been true. What happens in films? Oh, no. I helped dress him at the morgue. It couldn't have happened. Hello there. Come and drink to the departed. God rest the soul of... Alexander. Alexander. Still young. His heart went. Thank you. Here, help yourself. <clears throat> God give you good health. Reminds me, <coughs> reminds me a bit of Sasha. Really? <laughs> you look at Sasha and him. Only the weaklings survive. Shall we pack up? <coughs> I've only ever dreamed about him once. Mm -hmm. He said, move the pension into another bank. I moved it, of course. But I was really upset. I said, what, is that all you've got to, to say to me? <laughs> the man who looks like Sasha comes back and takes the plastic cup of vodka, caviar on bread and sweets. He sits down by Sasha's memorial and eats and drinks. Together with the man who looks like Sasha, we see a fresco of Sasha's life. In all the pictures, Sasha is wearing a military uniform and medals. Sasha is winning the fight with the drunken, arrogant men from Moscow who are trying it on, who, who are trying it on with his girl, Katya. One lies defeated on the shore, another runs away, a third begs for mercy. Sasha is wringing the neck of a mad dog. The pack of dogs is dispersing. The woman who was bitten by the mad dog has a shopping trolley in which she has bones to make stock for her family. She reaches out to her savior. Blood trickles from her legs. Sasha carries the young Oksana on his shoulders into the circus. Elephants and tigers step aside respectfully. Sasha is carried his elderly mother-in-law into the hospital. The grim reaper steps aside respectfully. Flying angels part. Doctors and nurses rush to greet them with stretchers. Sasha is pouring a bottle of vodka into the ear of the screaming Katya. Black beetles run away from her in different directions. Twelve pupils listen carefully to Sasha in the sports hall of the academy where he taught. Sasha has a tragic fall in the bathroom, clutching onto his heart. You could even indicate it was a bullet wound, although it wasn't. It was his heart. But the man who looks like Sasha wants to believe it was a bullet. Why did you call? I did. Did you know? Why? 
show you. If there's a power cut or if there's no gas, you can heat the place with wood. It heats the whole house. Plus, it does hot water. Plus, you can cook whatever you want on it. Amazing. All the neighbors have had them put in. You wouldn't believe the waiting list there is for these stoves. Oh, it's just people panicking, Mom. Panicking? With Russian tanks on the border <coughs> and the gas supply about to be switched off and, and with winter ahead, we'll all freeze. It's cost me 6000 mm. together with the setup. But it was a weight off my mind getting it put in. Thank God. I took all the, mo I took all the money out of the bank. When the crisis hits, we'll lose everything. I bought dollars. I ordered another carload of wood. It'll be here tomorrow. You're amazing. And I called out the man who clears wells. Oh, I'd forgotten we had a well. Yeah, I bought in four sacks of potatoes and two of onion. Uh, so we're fine. You can move in with Colio. You can spend the winter here. Oh, OK. And 100 liters of petrol, enough to get us to Warsaw if need be. There's what? Well, there's no petrol, and we have to flee. Well, how, how about if there are no hospitals around if we get burned? I've worked it all out. Auntie Galia, who sells the candles mm -hmm. in the church, she used to be a midwife. She can take you. But what if there are air raids? Well, if that happens, well, then this will all be for nothing. Don't be silly. There, there's a cellar we can hide down there. And then? Well, maybe there won't be any air raids. Let's, let's keep positive. All right. Have you got any herring? I have. Oh. What's wrong? Nothing. Have you been watching the news again? For goodness sake, the doctor told you not to. I haven't been watching anything. Shh. Shh, don't be frightened. Look how the wood's caught. Remember Grandma's stove? When you were a child, she used to, you used to sleep up on the, above the stove. Hush, hush, hush a baby. Don't sleep at the edge of the stove, little lady. Hush, hush. The stove is hot. Smell the cot seeds. And the whitewash on it came off on your clothes. Grandma used to get pot pies out and make borscht. Mm. Our grandma, she went through things so terrible we can't even imagine. What is the news? I haven't watched television all day. The doctor told me not to watch television. Oh yeah, quite right. Jeez. He's worried about me again. He told me I need to keep calm. Well, keep calm then. Are you taking vitamins? Yes. Well, my blood pressure is up. I, I measured it today and I can't even bear to say. Morning. Why? He wants to come back. What? You tell her, Sash. Why have I always got to? Well, you've got this war. The men and me, we discussed it, and we need to be back here. Well, in order to do what? That's what I said. What? I'm an officer. I can't just lie there. How come that didn't occur to you before, officer? Well, I don't know. If I'd known. If I'd known. Mom's right. You should have thought of it before now. And who said there was no coming back from over there? Well, you know. I do know. If I ask, then of course <coughs> it can't be done. Well, it can't really be done. But if there's a sixth call for mobilization, then it can. What's the sixth call for mobilization? Well, they've mobilized all the living now. The fifth call took the last of the living. But the war keeps on, so High Command asked us. But, but how, how do you think it's going to happen? What are we supposed to tell people? Like, wow, he's, and he's back. What, what am I supposed to tell Kolya? Oh, look, here's your granddad, and where has he been? It's fine. Lots of us are coming back. Leosha's coming back, and Sergei, and Bova, all the officers are. Wasn't worth it before, but it's a different matter now. <laughs> Who the hell 
need you. My country, my family. I'm against it. I'll be straight with you. <laughs> Why? Well, I don't want you to get killed. <laughs> what difference would that make now? Exactly. Well, is that what you want? Me? What? To send him off to war? You need a bit of money for that. Boots, uniform, Kevlar helmet, they're, they're supposed to cost about $500 if you buy them from a trader. We were collecting for one. We couldn't afford that. Sasha. And if we had to bury you again, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Afsan is right. Discussion over. What are you talking about, you two? I made a note. Me, Vova, Sergei, Leosha. You remember Leosha? I watched him dying of cancer before my eyes. When we went into the army, we made a solemn oath to the people of Ukraine to be loyal and true to them always and carry out our military duties and the commands of our superior officers conscientiously and honorably and to support the legal constitution of Ukraine and keep any state or military secrets. Me and Vova, Vova took to the drip before he died. Sergei, Leosha, we, we swore an oath to defend the Ukraine state and guard her freedom and independence. Me, Vova, and Sergei, he was a colonel as well, and he died of a heart attack as well. And, uh, and Leosha, we all swore we wouldn't betray the Ukrainian people. That's you, my girls. Have you gone now? Well, if that's how it is, off you go to the recruiting office. What use are us girls to you? Without girls, there's no point. <laughs> I want to send off from you. We already sent you off. Have a heart. For this sixth wave of mobilization, they need to obtain permission from living relatives. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't give it. I'll write you. I'll send you texts from the front line. Uh, you can send me pictures by the grandchildren, parcels. You can worry about me, and I'll defend you. We'll do it ourselves, Sasha. We've been managing by ourselves. You just rest. Let other people go. You got a good excuse. The sixth wave of mobilization. There are no excuses. I'm not giving my permission. All right. Well, I'll go and ask Eleonora then. Who? A woman. <laughs> Who is she? Do I know her? <laughs> what difference does it make? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha, I'm shocked. Did we need to know this? Is she your lover or something? I saw someone was bringing you flowers. You think what you like, but if you don't need me, then she can be the widow of a hero, and you're not. <gasps> Sasha, is this blackmail? I'll be off. Stop! Did you cheat on me then? No, no, I didn't cheat on you. Well, nothing like that. You just really hurt me. That really hurt. So who is this Eleonora? Mom, I saw her. Forget it. She worked in the literature department. She loved me. She's the size of a bus. Why did, you, why did you tell me? Nothing happened. I just said it to upset you, so you let me come home. I'm not, I'm not settled there. Let me go to war. You're in a good place. You rest. We'll do the fighting ourselves. Good grief. Come back, she says. Come back. Women, huh? Don't, don't get in a state. Do you need anything to take with you? No. Have you got money and visas, just in case? We'll cope. Put on our song to say goodbye to. The song gives rise to memories of that summer in the Crimea, around the barbecue with his work comrades, swimming naked at night. She has big breasts and long hair. Leading him drunk into a hotel room. He is leading her drunk into a hotel room. The young Oksana is jumping on the iron bed. He is talking about deep purple, black doctor wine for breakfast, jacuzzi baths, spa health form, jellyfish thrown up onto the sand, soup made of tinned vegetables and corn porridge, and in a cafe, a song, grotesque and sublime. The electric mosquito repellent is invented. positive to him again. If you want, you can go and catch up with him. I don't want to. Sasha? Why don't you fill out half the radiator card? It's a good thing we've got this 
Solid fuel stove. Mm. That's very good thing. And an old well. Mm. Where will we put Koya's little table? Um, over here, away from the stove. Uh, it won't fit there. Well, here then, maybe. If we move the sideboard. Well, look. Look what's here. Oh, someone hit the sweets. <laughs> strange. Very strange. <laughs> Not me. No, I don't even eat sweets. Oh, these are well past their sell-by. Leave them here, I'll throw them away. Well, the bin's full. Oh, I'll take it out. I'll take, I'll take the potatoes down to the <coughs> cellar. But somewhere far off, somewhere out there, a new old army is training. Just in case Katya and Oksana let Sasha go to war. Commands are issued. Line up! At ease! Caps off! Kachenko! About face! Lift your chests, bellies in, shoulders back, and one, and two, and three! Attention! Order arms! And one, and two, and three! Machine guns to the ready and fire. Retreat. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so I thought I would just start by saying, first of all, what a wonderful, and touching, and funny, and moving piece of, of work. It's wonderful play. Um, one of the things that struck me when I was uh, listening to the play and watching watching the work of the actors um, was that the play felt so much to me like it was uh, at its core about anxiety. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, the origin of the play and the, sort of the, the initial idea for the play. Anxiety in the play itself, right? Yeah, the, this as a, as a theme of the play, anxiety. Ну, дело в том, что я уже видела много и и постановок по этой пьесе, и, наверное, мне уже 
тяжело, тяжело переживать то, что я чувствовала, когда я смотрела впервые. Я видела много версий этого фильма, и это немного сложно для тебя чувствовать exactly the, the same scene as I felt for the first time. Но поскольку эта пьеса, она частично автобиографичная, то есть я, я ее написала, когда у меня умер близкий человек, мой отчим, да, и потом через несколько лет началась война, и я думала о том, как хорошо, что он умер тогда, иначе он бы сейчас пошел на войну и опять бы умер. Вот, и поэтому для меня это было, в принципе, пьеса очень личная, мне всегда ее сложно слушать. Well, uh, for me, this play had an uh, autobiographical character because uh, my um, stepfather died uh, and uh, he, um, and I felt like, uh, well, he <coughs> died before the war began and I was glad that he died and did not participate in the events which waited for him after, afterwards. One of the other questions I had was about translation, actually, and one of the things that I noticed in this play is that it, the tone changes some between being very um, emotional and it's a bit heavy, and then all of a sudden there's a lot of humor, and I wonder about that process for you, uh, watching it being translated into another language. <laughs> Тон был такой более тяжелый, драматический, а потом он изменился в такой э, более, э, более иронический. И что вы думаете о самом переводе и о характере его? Ну, я, если бы э, я могла рассуждать о переводе, я бы сейчас говорила по-английски. Мне бы не понадобился переводчик, поэтому я не могу об этом рассуждать совершенно. Э, я знаю, что... В принципе, на мой взгляд, вся, я писала всю пьесу в вероничном ключе с юмором, и это достаточно смешная пьеса, обычно смеются с самого начала. It's difficult for me to talk about the play and translation because I, unfortunately, I cannot uh, speak, uh, speak English fluently and um, cannot really express um, the nuances of the translation, but uh, I would like to say that I did, the play itself was um, designed to be ironical right at the beginning, and it's funny actually from the first word, and um, uh, it meant to be, uh, it, it meant to, to have an ironical character throughout the whole um, piece of it. Sarah, can you, do you want to talk a little bit about sort of your encounter with this play and sort of what maybe what a little of what conversation you had together about it? Thank you for reading. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you for your um, beautiful play. I yeah, I I would say that came across very strongly to me the the humor in it, um, and it was something that I think when we first read through it, um, you know, the actors want to be respectful and and it's about death, and um, I think the tendency is maybe to be more serious and we, you know, I think tried to to push that um humor as we worked on it. Um and I just was struck by the by the um depiction of that kind of relationship with with death. Um that it could be um the presence of a ghost could be annoying or um or funny instead of scary and sad. Um that was really refreshing to to be able to play with. уловить э, иронию в, в самом начале и юмор в самой пьесе. Э, и было интересно проследить тот факт, что э, сам э, вот присутствие, присутствие покойника в начале, оно было так... Э, то есть оно сначала может, могло быть раздражительным, а потом э, это превратилось в более такой юморный э, и такой более более версию, то есть версия самого характера немножко изменилась. I wonder if you talk a little bit about sort of 
generally maybe either, either the reception of this play in Ukraine, but also just sort of the climate for, or the, um, the, the ecology maybe of, of new plays in Ukraine right now in Kiev. об этой о постановке и также о том, что в Украине происходит и какая вот экология и а, об, вообще а, обстановка именно вот таких а, постановок в Украине. Ну, стоит сказать, что театр не был сильным местом в украинском искусстве, но после после тех событий, которые после Майдана, в общем-то, и после того, как началась война, как, как, как бы, как ни странно, а может, это вовсе не странно, но э, театральное движение стало гораздо более интересным, и очень много людей при помощи театра э, пытаются рефлексировать на тему происходящего. Well, after the war began in Ukraine, uh, a lot of people are trying to reflect on what's happening and uh, to depict it in, uh, in the play right of, of the te temporary theater. Great. Um, maybe we should open up for questions if there are any from the audience. I know that we should probably keep this relatively brief. Uh, uh, yes? If you don't mind, I ask in Russian and English. Мне очень понравилось, спасибо большое. Потрясающая комедия. Понятно, что комедия. И ты сказала, что написано. Ты видела постановки на разных языках или на на? На каких разных? На английском, русском и украинском. Okay, I just, I just translate. I, I, I thank Natasha for this, and I was wondering because she mentioned that she saw the play in different languages. As I'm a playwright myself, I'm crazy interested about these differences and like sort of like how you catch what is going on on stage, even if you're not fluent with the language. Um, ну, что, что ты скажешь, как на английском? Потому что я все время переводила на русский, когда я слышала. Ты на украинском или на русском написала? Я написала на русском. Я все время переводила на русский, потому что для меня на английском было как-то странно. Как, как тебе, как тебе это? Просто по слуху. Ну, мне вообще легко, потому что когда я не понимаю пьесу, мне очень легко ее слушать. Я не страдаю. А когда я понимаю, то я всегда страдаю. В общем. Oh. Поэтому в как... Да, конечно. Okay, she, she said that I might translate that, so I asked her how she feels about uh, listening to this play in English. Because like for me, uh, my mother tongue is Russian, so I was constantly translating this play in Russian. And I was wondering if she wrote it in Russian or Ukrainian, and it was written in Russian. And I was kind of like catching the, the irony in Russian. And I, I felt that it doesn't work in English, which is not your fault. I loved what you did. But I was like, Kolya. Like all the pronunciation of the names were like, huh? Uh, and Natasha just said that she loved to hear it in English because she doesn't suffer if it's in a foreign language. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? Anybody else? Yes. I wonder um, if these conversations went in your head after your stepfather's death, the ones that they were having with Sasha. Uh, Ну да, конечно, это много, я слышу голос своей мамы. Понятно, что много собирательного, но я же пишу про то, что я знаю, и я не, не, не очень-то умею выдумывать про людей, которых я не знаю. Yes, of course, uh, it resembles uh, the voice of my mother and uh, uh, what I usually try to depict what I know and what I uh, lived through. And I'm not very good at making, making up fictional characters. <laughs> Any other audience questions? So, um, Frank, just your question, how, was it done in Ukraine? Was it also done in Moscow? And what did the audiences think? Uh, no, uh, и первая постановка была вообще в Шотландии, в, 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 нет, не в Эдинбурге, в Глазго. И там публика 
увидела только, ну, я не знаю, как здесь, но публика совершенно не, не имела представления о том, что происходит в Украине, и увидела только отношения между мужчинами и женщинами. Они, они спрашивали, почему так, такие странные отношения между мужчинами и женщинами в вашей стране. And the only thing they could see was the relationship between men and women. And so they were surprised why the relationship between men and women is so strange in Ukraine. Постановка в Эстонии, на эстонском, кстати, языке, она... Это было такое прямое попадание. Публика очень хорошо понимала, о чем идет речь, потому что эстонцы... Ой... Простите, я сейчас ужасно сделала некорректную штуку. Это э, в Литве было. В Эстонии была другая постановка. В Литве. Э, литовцы очень боятся э, России, и они очень боятся войны, и они считают, что Украина — это буфер между, э, между ними. И вот э, они, они очень проникновенно слушали. Правда, они совсем не смеялись. А когда их спросила, почему не смеялись, они сказали, мы хохотали, вы просто не понимаете нашу природу, литовцев. Когда мы молчим, на самом деле мы смеялись очень сильно. Вот в чем разница. Um, well, uh, and also there was a version of the play in Lithuania. And um, Lithuanians, they're afraid of Russians. So they were a little bit tense when the play was going on. And then Natalia would ask, well, why w w wouldn't you be laughing when the play was going on? And they said, well, well actually, it was very funny. We just, uh, we just didn't express ourselves. И в России эта пьеса была поставлена очень хорошим режиссером, и спектакль, в общем, там прозвучал очень сильно. Но когда я увидела его в Берлине, я плакала, потому что Акценты были э, расставлены совершенно э, по-другому, и э, я поняла, что российский театр не стоит ставить, ставить пьесу про Украину, потому что это получается очень обидно. То есть если бы они привезли этот спектакль в Киев, их бы побили просто. Ну, мне так кажется. Я бы. Ну, там совершенно издевательски звучит в конце присяга, которую произносит герой и там пьеса про то, что монстры украинские монстры военные, значит, из того света хотят крови, хотят, значит, вернуться, чтобы они жаждут крови, только женщины, мудрые женщины могут в силах остановить это. Получилась пьеса про это, при том, что очень талантливый спектакль, и для меня это была большая травма. I guess I'll try to translate piece by piece. Uh, I was satisfied with the play in Russia and how it went. It was very emotional and very good, but um, I was actually crying when it was playing in Berlin. Нет, я просто видела этот этот спектакль привезли в Берлин, и мне не понравилось, как режиссер трактовал пьесу, совсем не так, как я ее написала. Мне кажется, что в российском театре сейчас не, не могут поставить эту пьесу, как она написана, из-за того, что она, как это объяснить, в общем, не могут поставить, как она написана, из-за so, из политики, вероятно. So, but I was disappointed with the play in Berlin, because I felt like because of Russian policy, um, it wasn't uh, made the way it should have been, and I felt like I was disappointed in the way it was represented. Паша, иди сюда. Come here, sit here. Она не выдерживает читки. Она спросила, чем отличается читка от спектакля. Читка короче, да? Я сказала, да. Саша, а... Паша. Паша, 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 Паша asked me what was the difference between uh, the, the play and uh, reading. the reading. And yeah. I Performance said, and reading. And I said that... Читка короче, да? Читка короче, она спросила, я сказала, да. Is the reading shorter than the play? And I said, yes, it's much shorter. Мне кажется, что читка больше. Ей кажется, что читка больше. 
but uh, it seemed to her that the reading was longer, actually. <laughs> Maybe Sorry. that's a good place for us to stop. <laughs> uh, any more any other last questions or comments? All right. Oh, sorry. Yes, there's always one last one. Yeah. I just appreciated that even in another, you know, uh, that the that theme of the mother who is so angry at the father and has all of that, and yet the child who just loves the dad. And I thought that just came across so beautifully, and, and that would come across anywhere, I think. So it was really interesting, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I'm, uh, my question is for the, the director, which is um, the kind of theme of hauntology, which um, permeates the play. Um, the challenges of representing that realm between the living and the dead, and the choices that you made. I wonder if you could talk about that in terms of directorially, how you how you work with the living and the dead on stage, particularly when you're working with. Um, um, restrictions in terms of, you know, this is not, this is theatre, and wonderfully so, and, uh, <coughs> but, but it's not um, Holly, Hollywood special effects, for instance, you're working with a kind of um, script in hand performance, so what, what are the challenges there for you? Um, uh, to me, uh, again, something that I really appreciated about this play is that it is very much a play um, in the stage directions and in how it's written. It's not written as a television show or a movie. It's not asking to do those things. Um, and I felt uh, I'm, I'm very interested in awkwardness in general um, because it's sort of not allowed in sitcoms uh, and it is allowed in theater um, to have silence, to have awkwardness, to have strange pauses. Um, and I felt I felt like uh, what w what we were sort of trying to do with Richard throughout was to have him make some problems for them that could that had created awkwardness between them that um, created humor that um, sort of again broke down that um, I think sometimes that sort of Hollywood uh, over reverence and fear that we have about dealing with the dead um, it's always it's hard to make a dead person ridiculous when they have to be very, very realistic, um, as in a film, or have special effects. Um, so I think theater is a great place to kind of explore that boundary in, in different ways in this play. I felt like was like asked for that in a, in a very refreshing way. So. We had one other question. Just one question, um, and I don't need the mic, I can speak loud enough. Oh, it's perfect. It's recording. Sorry, recording. No, we it's record. Recording. Oh, you're recording. No, no problem. Hello? Okay. Uh, earlier you said that um, by, by the play not being played in Russian, um, you actually didn't suffer listening to it. What I'm trying to understand is as, as a reader, or as a, as a reader, we try to duplicate or replicate the feelings that you feel as a writer so that we can actually feel that while we read it. What do you think would be important to know about the culture or the language so that when we actually read that, that we can actually feel and understand that play the way you actually wrote it. Это, это, это не, не взять, а принять критику. Э, 
когда ставили там мои пьесы, режиссер приезжал в Украину, изучал предмет, о котором шла речь вместе с художником. Да, и очень много проводил, ну, как, было такое погружение в тему, такое настоящее серьезное. Но это не применимо марксисту, это очень серьезно. I feel like it's much more difficult to express uh, feelings and nuances in uh, English uh, during the reading. And when the actual movie video, video of the play was made, the filmmaker actually came to the Ukraine and... The theater director, he came to, to the and he studied and he studied the situation and he studied the characters and play in detail Yeah, so it's, it's nice when um, as a director um, or um, um, the project itself has money to actually go to the place where the play is made and to get immersed into the culture and see what's happening and understand the humor itself and then manifest it better to, uh, to the audience. Anyone last? One last yeah. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm just curious because I've uh, um, I've performed in many different countries, and um, with translations, you know, plays similar same play that's been translated in many different languages. And the the wonderful and fascinating thing for us as actors is to see different cultures react completely differently to the same text. Um, and so my question to you is. Is that something that filters in to your thinking when you're writing plays that are clearly being performed internationally? And if or if not, what is it that you would like, uh, what's the basic thing that you would like international audiences to come away with having seen your plays? разные национальности, они, они реагируют на одну и ту же э, постановку совершенно по-разному. Вот. И что бы вы хотели, чтобы иде, идеально, чтобы вы представили, э, что все культуры или э, все страны, где происходит э, эта пьеса, э, вынесли для себя из этой постановки? Ну, вы правильно совершенно сказали, что в каждой стране будут реагировать по-разному, исходя из своего там, исторического и личного опыта. Вы uh, абсолютно right, that every place, every country will react differently to the play because of the historical and personal background. Uh, ну, конечно, в то же время мне хочется рассказать о том, что происходит, кроме своей личной истории, да, которая может произойти где угодно, мне хочется еще таким, через личную историю рассказать о событиях, которые происходят в Украине, о политических событиях. Of course, I would like to tell my own personal story about what happened to me in the past and my personal experience, but I also would like to deliver a message about the country and what's happening in Ukraine now and what what is the situation is like. All right, well, thank you all very much for sticking around for some great questions, and thank you to the Siegel Center, and to all of you, and to the wonderful actors who read the play. It's fantastic. <laughs>